Hello everyone. In a prior video, I showed you how to find the vertex of a parabola using the completing the square method. But in that video, the term coefficient in front of the x squared term was a 1. Today, we're going to kick it up a notch and do it when there is something other than a 1 as the coefficient of your squared term. If you missed that prior video, I've got it linked up here. You may want to watch that one first if you don't know how to find the vertex of a parabola. But first, I want to mention that I believe something great is going to happen for you today. And now, back to the video. If you're someone who finds math tricky, give this video a thumbs up. That way, out, and I'll know to make more simple videos like this for you. All right, in today's video, we're going to find the vertex of a parabola. If you recall, a parabola looks something like this, and I'm just roughly drawing it. This was one that's opening up, and the vertex would be the lowest point right there. And if we drew a dotted line through the vertex, it would be a mirror image on either side. Likewise, a parabola could open downward like that, and the vertex would be the highest spot, and again, if we drew a line through it and fold it in half, it would be a mirror image on either side. So that is the vertex. We're looking for either the lowest point or the highest point. In this case, our coefficient here is positive, so it's going to be opening upward. But either way, we're going to do it the same method, even if it were a negative. Just a reminder, the formula for a vertex. The vertex form is f of x is equal to a parentheses x minus h close parentheses squared plus k. That's the format we want to get this into. And if we have it in that format, then our vertex is going to be equal to the h k which is going to be our x and our y terms, the h and the k will be the vertex. All right, let's look at this one here. We're going to start out the same way as we did last time. I'm just going to put parentheses around the first two terms. Now, we're going to rewrite it, but what I want to do is I want to factor out the greatest common number between this term and this term. I don't want to factor out the x's. I just want to factor out the coefficient in front of them. So I'm just going to copy down f of x. And what can we factor out of 2 and negative 8? <clears throat> That's right. We could factor out a 2. That's the greatest number that we can factor out. So I take the 2. I put the parentheses. If I factor out the 2, I'm left with x squared and minus 4x. Close parentheses, and I just copy down the 3. So 2 times 1x squared is 2x squared, and 2 times negative 4x is negative 8x. So we have successfully factored out the 2. Now I'm going to expand this to put a additional term in my parentheses. I'm going to put an additional term in the parentheses f of x is equal to 2 parentheses x squared minus 4x plus, I'm going to put a, just a line there because we don't know what we're putting in there yet, close parentheses, plus 3. Last time I'm going to subtract a number as well. And that number will be balancing out this number so that it remains in balance. But there's a trick to that. So stay with me to the very end because if you try and do it like we did last time, it's not going to give you the right answer with this one because we have our coefficient greater than 1 in front of our x squared term. All right, since I've gotten that written out, I'm also going to write it in the factored form. And I'm going to put two parentheses and close parentheses and squared. So this will be the factored form. And just like last time, we're creating a perfect square trinomial. If you're finding this kind of material helpful, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel 
and click that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you. Let's start filling in the factored form. Since this is an x squared, when it's factored, we know that this first term is going to be an x. So we just take away the square because we're already squaring it up here. So we've got that. Then to find this term, I'm going to take my middle term. And the middle term is the negative 4. I don't want the x. I just want the coefficient in front of it. So I'm going to write negative 4. And I'm going to divide by 2. Whatever the middle term is, I divide by 2. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. That I plug into here. So minus 2. So far, so good. So we're working on building up that factored form. Now I need to find out what to put in here. So I'm going to copy that back down just so it's right in front of us. Plus 3 minus something else. So I, all I did was recopy down the form here so we can figure out what goes in there. The way we figure out what goes here is I take this term here that we found, and it's right here as well. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to square it. So in this case, we got negative 2. I'm going to square that whole term. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So that's the term we fill in here, positive 4. But we can't just put the positive 4 here like we did last time. That is because we've got a 2 out here that's multiplied by everything in here. So we need to take whatever this number is and multiply it by that. So I've got 2 times 4 is equal to 8. And that's our number that we put here. So we're going to subtract 8 on that side. So that's our twi trick. That's the twist. Don't miss that. Multiply this coefficient times that number to get this number. All right, so now we've got most of it built up. Now we just, let's clean it up a little. I've got f of x is equal to 2 parentheses x squared minus 4x plus 4. I'm just copying it down. And then I've got a plus 3 and a minus 8. So I'm going to combine those, and that's a negative 5. And since I've got a negative 5 out here, I'm going, to use, I'm going to use that same constant, and I'm going to add it or subtract it, in this case, to our factored form. So our factored form is f of x, and again, the factored form is right here. So I'm going to take that and rewrite it as f of x is equal to 2 parentheses x minus 2, the whole thing squared, and I'm going to bring down this minus 5. So now we have it in our vertex form. I can go ahead and find what the h and the k are. Now, mind you, the h is the, the up here we have the negative h. So whatever this is, it's the negative of that. So I'm going to change the sign. So it's the negative of negative 2. Change the sign so that my x is a 2. And then this is my k. I don't change the sign. I just bring it down. So our vertex of that parabola is 2, comma, negative 5. This term here will show you whether it opens up or down. In this case, because it is a positive, it is opening up. You've now properly found the vertex of a parabola. Now, keep your grade alive and subscribe. Thank you.